So, welcome back to the main stage. The next talk will be about information security. As all of you working in the web field probably know, information security is a big topic nowadays, and the next speaker, let's say, found some interesting vulnerabilities in German municipal web projects. And I first read about it on Twitter, where he talked about it, and I'm really excited that we have René here today to give us an in-depth introduction into his findings. So please welcome on stage René. Hi. Okay, um, I'm a little bit nervous. Um, today, uh, I would like to talk about um, information uh, security in uh, German administrations. Um, I messed up the title a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm first time on such a big stage, so let's hope it works. <laughs> um, I have no direct contact with uh, public ad administrations except for what I know as a citizen. Uh, but I know about uh, computers and uh, what they can do. So during this presentation, I will mainly look at uh, my laptop uh, so I don't make, make any mistakes um, and I'm feeling a lot safer this way. Uh, however, uh, what will I be showing you uh, today should be even more interesting um, on the screen. <laughs> so um, a brief introduction about myself. Uh, my name is René Rehme. I live and work in Stuttgart. Uh, my main job is uh, maybe, uh, like the most of you, a web developer uh, in an agency. And my side job is IT security related. Um, I offer penetration tests. Um, by the way, you can follow me on uh, neos.social. I am posting some security related things there from time to time. So if you think this talk is interesting, um, you will get more about that at Mastodon. Um, I received greater public attention through severe society research uh, that I published. Uh, on the left, you can uh, see an article in Die Zeit, where I took a closer look at German universities from the outside. Um, on the right, a TV, spot, uh, rep uh, a a TV report uh, uh, on VDR about my research about the IT security of German administrations. Um, when I say German administrations, it's mainly about German cities. Um, and that's what uh, this talk is about now. I would like uh, to show you which problems I have found and uh, maybe you can also take something from that. So how did it come to this in first place? Uh, perhaps you have also noticed it. Uh, I read an increasing number of reports uh, of attacks on German administrations in year 2022. Uh, most of these attacks were ransomware attacks. Um, the most uh, common uh, used attack vendor is probably social engineering. Um, in the BSI Lagebericht, uh, this also mentioned. Um, the focus is on the human as vulnerability. And if successfully done, um, malicious code is executed by an employee by clicking some files in an email, maybe. Uh, data on the file system is uh, encrypted. Uh, next, uh, people, uh, they are getting an email from the uh, criminals and ransom is exhorted mostly in Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, like uh, give me money or your files uh, will remain in data salad. Um, this directly affects internal IT systems. Therefore, employees are mainly um, uh, sensitized to this type of attack. 
um, which is good and important. Um, but what about uh, IT security when attacks occur on external IT systems? Um, we don't read about that. Um, so I have looked at that. And um, I would like to tell you how I proceed since these first steps are probably also taken by criminal hackers. And it's all about uh, getting information at first. So um, uh, profiling is carried out. Um, IP addresses and domains are collected. Um, with about 11,000 cities, it would be very time consuming to do this manually. Um, so we can automate this in different ways. Um, use the hacker tools uh, you know the best, they said. So I used Neos Flow. Um, the logic is actually simple. Write a command uh, con controller with an action, which um, in turn runs through other processes. Um, a crawling of uh, Wikipedia, uh, Google, or yeah, other sites uh, for valid endpoints. And if we have um, the IP addresses, we can do a reverse lookup to find more hosts. So uh, in fact, uh, subdomains. And then um, we have to check, or I have checked uh, which software is used. Um, so take a closer look at what is widely used. Uh, identify sensi uh, sensitive files and uh, directories. So basically learn to understand the application, how it works. Um, and next, uh, the focus was defined. Um, with so much software deployed, uh, there are too many potential targets. Uh, so I picked um, out only the most interesting, in my opinion. For example, um, intranet instances, um, IoT devices, services offered on web pages uh, like uh, formulas, uh, database servers, email servers, and um, service provider and hoster. Um, now, before we really get into it, uh, I found quite a few problems and want to make clear that I follow uh, ethical uh, principles, uh, bigger problems such as data branches or similar, similar were uh, reported via responsible disclosure. So no data was written, changed, or deleted. Um, data that was downloaded during the research was secure, uh, securely destroyed. Um, I reserved screenshots for this presentation um, personal data has been made, unrecognizable city names and or logos I have also censored. Um, I don't want to expose any German administration, but uh, yeah, to draw attention to weak points. Um, I will mention one, uh, one city, I think, um, in this talk, but uh, I will explain it then why. <laughs> Um, so uh, let's start it. Um, intranet instances. Here you can see uh, intranet instance I had access to. Um, I was able to access um, as a user with some admin rights. So I could um, I could uh, see the user management with all the rights uh, the user had. Uh, for example. Uh, E-Akte, which could be problematic. Um, so um, I have some more. Is that work? Ah, yes. Here, uh, another instance, um, which was used as pa password manager. I was confused. Um, one more. Uh, yeah, nothing really special. Another one. And there were some documents like this. Um, yeah. Um, so how did he do that, you may ask. Um, and it's more trivial uh, than you may think. Um, as a web developer, I know um, all too well that test credentials are often created during development, which is quite normal, I think. Um, 
but test credentials should of course be deleted after um, um, from the um, production environment, um, better already in staging. Um, I simply tried the credentials test test as username and password and <laughs> was logged in as you see. Um, I bet uh, with a brute force attack the quota would have been even higher. Um, so my advice is to delete test credentials, uh, introduce a password policy. Um, but ask yourself why an intranet needs to be public accessible at all. I mean intranet, internal things. In my opinion, um, an intranet should uh, only be accessible in a, a segregated network area. And if an exer uh, ex external access is necessary, for example, a home office, then the access could be realized uh, with a v uh, um, VPN, for example. Um, printers were not in a separated network area in some cases, which is also problematic. Uh, so publicly accessible so web interfaces of the printers. And um, yeah, uh, always keep in mind printers uh, these days are IoT devices um, with several functions. And uh, yeah, why is this problematic? Uh, printers are in most cases not password protected by default. Um, these printers were also not password protected. Um, laser chat printers. And I found um, a function uh, where an attacker can scan in network folders, which is not so good, I think. Um, or fax forwarding, an attacker can just forward incoming data, send it via fax by using this function. Um, so you may ask, uh, who is uh, still sending faxes these days? Um, nobody does, uh, but a small populated Gallic village still resists. Um, and during the research, I was, um, it was not unusual to come across uh, public available backups like this. Um, contained there the entry file system in the database, um, or also um, logs containing sensitive information, for example, error logs or the history of the command line user. Um, but uh, it can be much worse. Um, you only had to know a link to, um, whoops, you, uh, to generate a SQL dump of the database and the file system live. So that's a nice feature. Um, and remind, um, this is Kritis, which means critical infrastructure. So I don't know why this is even possible. <laughs> um, and uh, logs could also be found that simply stored input uh, from uh, forms. Uh, this form is titled Anmeldung zur öffentlichen Müllabfuhr, so a form which is widely used uh, on this uh, website where I found this log. Um, yeah, and this could be your data, public. Um, if you run a CMS or an online service, data is mostly stored in a database. Now uh, it is common, common to have a database management software installed on the server as well. Uh, I was able to find uh, most of the PHP my admin instances. Uh, normally these are also protected by a login, but as you can see, uh, this was not already uh, always the case. Um, this is especially critical because all data that is stored in a database is accessible. Um, here you can see um, a service provider. Oops, that was, sorry. A service provider on the left, so the, the left uh, picture. And This service provider has left all of his uh, customers' databases lying around open. So each database is one application of a customer. Um, easy going. <laughs> um, 
I found it more shocking that passwords were uh, MD5 hashed in many cases or even saved in plain text. Critical infrastructure. Um, let's move to the most fatal findings. Uh, there are different software for the use of web mailers. One of them is Roundcube. Um, I have read the documentation of this software and already had a bad feeling. Uh, this software is not secure by design. Um, you can install it and use it, um, but if you don't read the last part of the documentation, you might have a problem because it's titled How to Secure Your Installation. <laughs> um, it is important uh, to protect two um, directories from direct access. Um, guess what happens? Right. Masses of misconfigured Roundcube instances, and here you can see only one log file with over one million entries. Um, when was an email sent? So the sender and the, the, the recipients, which IP address, and so on. Uh, it was sometimes uh, possible uh, to access email bodies uh, via the IMAP log. So not only um, addresses the whole email which was sent was accessible, and uh, that's the best data for social uh, engineering um, you can image. Um, and there are other logs. In an error log, a duplicated sessions were also stored. Could be a problem if an attacker is monitoring this file and using the session identifier for storing a cookie in the browser to realize an account takeover. I tested that um, not on a live instance, but uh, it works. Okay. And there was a directory called temp, right? Of course, um, they were not protected either. And in this one case alone, over 4,385 email attachment could be downloaded. Um, when Apache directory listening is enabled, it looks like this. And um, do you know? Do you want to know which data of citizens, so so you, were publicly accessible here? I can tell you everything you can image, imagine. Uh, for example, identity cards, which is not so good, I think, and much more. I could not show all this. I would run out of slides, but. This can also danger for people's lives, uh, as you can see from this example. It could be a problem by the current led war of aggression by Russia. Um, all these vulnerable uh, instances uh, have been secured in the meantime. I checked them all. I crawled all all endpoint, uh, endpoints again for this, and I'm pretty sure that. This is fixed uh, in all cases. Most of the web server that run their um, web presences have PHP installed, um, as with any other software that is under active development, there is a roadmap for PHP that tells me as client when it's time to update my binary. Um, of course, I looked at the PHP versions used by the German administrations. Um, this information was um, partly visible through the HTTP header, uh, but also through a public PHP info. Um, this should be not in pro, uh, production environment. Um, uh, here's a little statistic. Oops. Okay, I have a little problem with my text here, but okay. So the problem is uh, with a PHP info that um, 
There are so much information uh, disclosure for a potential attacker um, about PHP itself, installed modules, um, server information. I would like to make it clear that um, that even the, 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 the district of uh, Sachsen um, Anhalt Bitterfeld, which should be highly uh, sensitized by successful hacker attacks in the past, does not manage to turn off such trivial things. Uh, in this case, um, in hundreds of instances I looked at. Um, so I would like to mention that uh, this type of information disclosure is problematic. Um, internal paths, values of configuration options, um, also using a server or environment variables are not u unusual. Um, So you see, this is this can be a really problem. Um, if you have a cross-site scripting vulnerability on your website, an attacker can normally not read out your session cookie um, if you have set the uh, HTTP only flag. It protects the cookie uh, from read out via JavaScript. Um, but if there is a PHP info available, an attacker could create an uh, XHR request and read out the uh, cookie sessions from there. So um, this is a good possibility for an attacker to take over a logged-in account. And there are a lot more information which can help an attacker to escalate uh, vulnerability. Uh, in most cases, it's always the combination of many findings to get a serious impact. Um, I hope. Okay, my, my my whole text is lost. I can't read my notes. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> okay, I'll try it. Um, I found uh, also vulnerabilities on uh, service providers and hosters. Um, here are some of them, and as you see, it's not the the small uh, service provider from the city. Uh, they are really the big one. Ones um, domain factory. Ionos, and so on. And yeah, I don't uh, want to hide the fact that uh, not only German administrations have to work on their IT security, but also service providers and hosters. Um, one last uh, example um, for um, Hetzner. Um, why is even a trivial cross-site scripting vulnerability uh, serious? So uh, I will show you um, by this example. Uh, for all who doesn't know Hetzner, Hetzner Online with thousands of uh, servers in operation is one of the largest data center operators in Europe. And using a cross-site uh, scripting vulnerability, code could be executed in the administration interface console H. Um, it's only um, one wrong click on a link uh, with uh, this payload and you lost. Um, this allowed me, for example, to read out the root credentials of existing servers. Uh, so, yeah, it's not only the small ones uh, that make such mistakes, also the big ones and, um, yeah. The conclusion. Um, I think that um, yeah they they have to uh, yeah they have to they have not the uh, the uh, okay my English is so bad I'm sorry um, I just uh, try to go on um, I don't mean that. Um, they should um, develop or maintain everything themselves, um, but they should uh, definitely um, look for better IT um, or persons who work with IT and uh, security. And yeah, having a, a competent contact, uh, uh, contact person for the uh, respective service providers would be helpful. Uh, to be able to question IT security issues or to make the right decisions. 
at the end, it's not all that bad. Uh, from over 11,000 targets, only a few hundred had problems. Um, so I think that's not, uh, not, not that much. Um, the legal situation is currently a major problem for people like me. Uh, yeah, when we do things like this, uh, the German law contains the so-called hacker paragraph. Uh, it does currently not separate good or uh, criminal hackers. Uh, for this reason, we have to be extremely careful what we do, uh, even if our intentions are actually good. Um, the Chaos Computer Club has always uh, criticized this, and the governing politicians uh, wanted to change this, uh, but little is con currently done. Um, Anyway, I, I hope I was able to contribute to rise awareness <laughs> and thank you for the opportunity to speak at the NEOS conference. Thank you. Thank you, René, for these insights. If you want to submit a question, you can do so via the app. They're just coming in, thank you. When I think about German IT and you know, uh, municipality IT, we're always calling for more digitalization and we want to have more digital tools available for us. Now with what you have discovered and shown today, do you think that's a good idea? Um, yeah, I actually think this is a good idea. Um, there's the so-called um, OZG, Online Zugangsgesetz, um, which basically means um, uh, all, um, yeah, for all we have to go to the Amt and um, doing stuff like, the, uh, like there, uh, there should be a digital solution. And I think that's a great idea, but uh, yeah, as we saw, uh, it could be a problem if, um, if they don't work uh, on their IT security. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a question here. Did you involve the German BSE, BSI, or Zertbund? Yeah, of course. Um, I reported some things to the Zertbund um, where I was not sure if the problem is uh, there are some things like I showed which were publicly uh, uh, accessible, so that's no problem. I did not uh, hack into some systems that were all there, but uh, if I do some things to, to go into a system which is a problem with our law, then I uh, report such things via the third bund because there um, you can say, okay, don't, uh, um, don't use my name, and um, then I am pretty sure that, uh, or we can be sure that there is no problem after, um, yeah, after they fix the problem and said, hey, who was the hacker? Okay, and the follow-up question to that, what were the reactions from those officials? A very friendly and thankful. Um, in most cases, there were some, uh, yeah, some cases where they're not even answer. So, yeah, this is always a problem. And the biggest problem is to, to get the right uh, contact person. So um, there's, I think it's a standard. Today there's uh, RC standard for creating a security.txt, um, which is basically a file with the contact information when um, you as hacker found a vulnerability and what is the correct uh, contact to, yeah, to so write. So that would be something that all of us could include in our web projects. Of course. Uh, I think that uh, the biggest companies already did that. Um, it should be uh, implemented. Okay. Did you receive bounties, rewards, or appreciations for your findings? <laughs> I run my servers on Hetzner uh, for zero, <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, but I'm not um, writing them and say, yo, uh, here is a vulnerability, uh, what can I get from you? 
This is uh, something you should never do as an ethical hacker. So just say, here's a problem um, with a detailed um, description. And if they want to, I don't know, send your merch, then it's OK. Uh, but um, yeah, normally not. I did some bug bounty official, uh, but um, yeah, that's not, not something I will, uh, I'll do uh, day for day. All right. There's another question here. Is software security auditing something you think should be enforced by government regulation? Of course. I really think that because, um, as we see, they installed everything without thinking about is it securely installed, what, what is the software, is it secure by design, etc. So I think this is uh, a, good, yeah, a good thing. All right. What is the best way to communicate security issues to a company if you found them? You mentioned the security. Yeah, with the security.txt. And if, um, if you don't, uh, sure, or can I get problems? Uh, as I said or, uh, already, uh, there's the CERT Bund, and you can always um, send them via a form um, such problems. Um, you don't even have to give your name or something. So, and they will redirect it then to the uh, correct uh, contact. Okay. And there's another one, probably very general. So, how does one get started in information security? Oh, I really don't know. I mean, I started. I I, <laughs> I don't really know when I started. Um, when I was making my first website with 13 years or something, uh, it was hacked, and I was wondering, okay, why and how uh, is, was this done? And yeah, so so there. This was sort of starting point, but yeah. Um, I think um, if you really want to know uh, what is possible and how you can realize things, there is Portswinger, uh, which is a site um, from Burp, I think. I don't really know uh, at the moment, but there are all vulnerabilities descripted, um, uh, described, and uh, this is a good source for reading about uh, vulnerabilities. All right, that's the questions I got from the audience. René, thank you very much for these insights into information security and the state of our municipal web and IT projects. Thank, thank you very you. much.